Hey there, Pisces, and thank you for joining me for your April 2021 Tarot and Oracle reading. It is so great to have you with me. I hope that your first six days of April have been going great. It is the 6th of April, and I apologize for it taking so long to get to your uh, reading here for the month of April, but these last few days, um, starting before actually the month began, there was a lot going on with um, internet and construction and power and computer stuff in general, upload times and of course other appointments and all sorts of stuff going on and days just turned into days turned into days so anyway we're here on the 6th of april 2021 i'm going to get into your reading right now so without further ado let's see what our first card is from the moonology oracle conclusions are within reach full moon eclipse to start your reading here pisces okay conclusions are within reach I like that. We're going to jump right into the tarot using the Lightseer's Tarot for your reading today. We're going to do Lightseer's Tarot, then Sacred Geometry Oracle, Archetypes Oracle, and then the Hidden Worlds. Okay, so let's see what we get. Conclusions are within reach. Yeah, something coming to an end. Some type of decisions I'm feeling. I think maybe waiting to hear on some type on something to know to make decisions on other things I'm feeling. Um deciding to do something, to go somewhere, to kind of starting getting to him here I'm kind of feeling getting to a point getting to, it's coming soon where you're gonna feel confident in making a decision that could be for some of you what the deal is um yeah that this is kind of an internal like timing is gonna happen when you're gonna finally be like okay this is what i'm gonna do have, have a feeling it's something like that rather than outside forces have a feeling it's more internal but let's see oh here's first card i'm gonna keep face down Oh, second and third card here for you, Pisces. Conclusions are within reach. Start us off. I'm hearing decisions will be made. Next card, two more cards, and then we'll be done. That was interesting. Took out had a chunk of it was a lot of cards, but it was like six, seven cards flew out and put out my my candle. But I was scared to put it back in. There's another chunk of cards. Don't want a chunk of cards. Next card. Okay, one last card. Oh, and there it is. Okay. That took a wee bit of effort, and I will light my candle again. All right, Pisces. Let's see what we have here. We have the Five of Pentacles in reverse. And let me just check in here. We're going to keep that in reverse. Yes, I'm hearing. Next card, Four of Cups in reverse. Hearing to keep that in reverse. Ten of Wands coming up next. Right side up. Four of Pentacles in reverse. Let's see here. I mean, that was in reverse. We're going to go right side up with it. And then Three of Swords in reverse.
I'm hearing straight up with that. And then lastly, seven of pentacles to round it out. Okay, Pisces. Two fours, so definitely we have a three, two fours, a five, a seven, and a ten. Pentacles, cups, wands, swords. Yeah, I definitely feel that there's been something, there's something on your mind, something going on, something to make a decision about, um, really putting a lot of thought into it. Let me turn her right side up. Really putting a lot of thought into it and just kind of waiting. Feels like there's been a lot of waiting, like okay, this is what happened, or this is how I feel now, but I need to wait to see energies and just let time kind of come in and do its thing. Um, I'm hearing even let the seasons change. And now that they have, now we've gone from winter to spring, um, you are in a forward movement. You are, there's definitely like moving forward here with, with your decision making. Um, the four of pentacles came up in reverse, but I was told to put it right side up. This is just, this is telling you, me that there's been kind of, ultimately we have good energy with security. So if you've been kind of like, am I going to be secure if I make this, this decision, you know, to kind of go off on your own, maybe it's to leave a job. Maybe it's starting another job. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm definitely going to leave the job. When am I going to leave the job? I'm not sure. I'm definitely going to leave this roommate situation or this relationship. And it's been a matter of timing. Like I need things to be in a certain space first before I make this these decisions. Yeah, I definitely feel it's more of that than outside circumstances conclude those type because it says conclusions are within reach but it really feels more like these are decisions that you are waiting to make kind of a chain reaction kind of thing but anyhow this with this four of pentacles um we have the four of cups and the four of pentacles here so definitely this the the catalyst for energy shifting is definitely the stargate the 4 4 to 4 14 stargate that you are definitely feeling that push now and it is about releasing from things that have you tied up that you feel very much connected to energetically emotionally physically that it's going to take some effort to really detach from this so i definitely suggest cord cutting um from the people, the situation, whatever, once you're out of it to really release from it. And, and I have a, an ebook on the importance of cord cutting and um, a couple of meditations that will guide you through that process. So please check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org for that because that's definitely what needs to happen. Again, this card came out in reverse so I feel that you have done a decent amount of this, but but there's more to be done here. Through the process, you need to be constantly clearing through this process to help you release, to help you move forward because you feel that there is kind of this, I'm hearing, burden to stay where you are and it's like but i can't i need to move on i've given it maybe more time and and me being in it than i should or than i really wanted to but i done that because it was necessary for me to, to for timing to be where it is like on different on in different ways and then seven of pentacles um this is going to be good for you. This decision is a good decision. It's going to, to it's going to take a little time to get settled in, to see the fruit of your labor, if you will, with the seven of pentacles really says, you know, you have patience, you're going to do the work, you are going to see 
this come up these seven pentacles come up it's coming up with this tree so trees don't grow overnight they take some time so we need to be patient with the energy of what is going to develop after you make your decisions okay let's get into sacred geometry and see what we get here to help us out with some information And this could just, this could also mean like a new way of approaching work, a new way of going like about a project or even starting a project. Like just there's different types of, of things going on here with the different decisions I feel that, you know, is needed to be made um, or will be made for you guys. Because um, again, this is a general reading. So it's hard to say specifically exactly what this is about. Um, but whatever it is, it's it's in process and you're going to feel that push here in April. Okay. Here we go. Fruit of life. Card 14, Fruit of Life, Fe Spheres of Knowledge. Take a look at that. I'm going to take that in for a moment. Okay. And let's get into it without me. Oh my gosh, dropping everything. It's like, yep, avalanche. <laughs> trying so hard to avoid the avalanche but oh well okay so card number 14 fruit of life 13 spheres of knowledge i am ready to expand my knowledge of life and that which has been hidden behind the veil this card has appeared today as you are searching for answers to questions you need to find. Your longing for knowledge that has started to awaken deep within your mental and spiritual core. You are ready to take the leap of faith that is now wanting to show you that there is more to this world than meets the eye. It is time to start searching for that special course or teacher to help you expand your knowledge. You will find yourself starting to seek out more like-minded people who are on the same wavelength energetically and sacred geometry. When we remove the two outer concentric circles from the flower of life, another six full circles complete the partial arcs. When this occurs, we are left with a pattern called the fruit of life, named so as it is said to contain the blueprint of all of creation. From atomic and molecular structure, it is all life forms in existence. It sets up the platform of Metatron's cube, which contains all five platonic solids, which are the building blocks of the entire universe. When we look at this picture, we see spheres, which are representations of the feminine. In two dimensions, it holds 13 circles. These 13 circles contain informational systems, each containing another aspect of reality. 13 is said to be the key for unity and transition between worlds and dimensions. It pertains to the 13, chak 13 chakra system or energetic bodies. In music, the chromatic scale consists of 12 notes and the 13th being a repeat of the first one. It is the 12 around the one. If we were to look at this shape three dimensionally, we obtain a cube of four by four by four spheres equaling 64 spheres in total. The fruit of life is seen as a feminine of Metatron's cube. As at this point, there are only circles and no lines. And practical application. We each carry the ancient knowledge of wisdom within us. It sits deep within our DNA. As we begin to awaken, our thirst for knowledge becomes more inherent. This geometry can help us find the answers we are looking for. We can do this by meditating on this card and assessing the system of knowledge. Oh, sorry. And accessing the system of knowledge it pertains to. 
Whether we want to delve into higher worlds and dimensions or work on the informational systems on a self-healing level, the fruit of life is there to help us remember that which has been forgotten. And card numerology is number one. And crystal suggestions, Herkimer Diamond, Lumerian Seed Crystal, Selenite, and, and Atlantisite. So fruit of life, spheres of knowledge. Um, so we heard a lot about the divine feminine in this card. And, and it just kept showing me um, and telling me, let's pay attention to the spheres, to the circles in your reading. And there's a lot. We have the five of pentacles, the four of cups, the four of pentacles, and the seven of pentacles. Um, we have the ten of wands and the three of swords, which is 13 as well. So it's interesting. Um, the two cards that add up to 13, which is the 13 spheres, is our wands and swords and then we have five and four and four and seven five pentacles so those are round feminine four cups is of course circles with the cups four pentacles again here feminine and then the seven is divine with that seven of pentacles so um what was chiming in through this is to pay attention through this time period, Pisces, of um, working, first of all, with the element of water, connecting with um, Venus and the Divine Feminine, and of course, Mother Gaia. Um, working with grounding your chakras was definitely something that will help you. So whatever self-healing um, or healer that you're guided to to work with your chakras, I would definitely um, say is in order and will help you with these decision make with this decision through the process of making it, announcing it, putting it into into motion and going through the the actual changes that will come and just helping you to, to clear energy as you go forward and ground into the new reality um and really this is about going forward from a place of empowerment and knowledge um again really wanting you to awaken that ancient knowledge and um and that these times, the making, okay, so I'm hearing now making this, these decisions that you're going to make, because it's going to be a series, not just one decision. It's like one decision that leads to a series of decisions or a series of changes um, that are just going to be, you know, going on. And for you to really stand in power with all of that, um, getting into your, getting into, um, the energy of of grounding with Gaia, um, meditating on connecting on f going with the flow with your sh opening up, healing your chakras, clearing your chakras, um, is definitely going to help you. Again, we talked about cutting cords. You definitely want to cut cords through this process. I just feel like it's a lot coming through with um, continual energy clearing that needs to happen because it's like once you make this decision, once you make these announcements or announcement first to yourself, like this, you're going to pull the trigger. It's going to be, you know, when it's going to be, when you're going to talk to whomever the people are that you need to, to discuss these things with, start making decisions. A lot of energy is going to be released. A lot of it's going to be released from you into your atmosphere. It's going to hit what whomever's that it needs to hit. It's going to kind of bounce back. You're going to need to maintain this energy. Okay, so let's move forward. I've already pulled the first card from the archetypes decks that we're working with, which is the selves and the tools. Um, 
and there's the places and the initiations or the themes that we're not working with we're just working with the selves and the tools so the aspect of self that needs to be looked at paid attention to um or you know in one way or another and then also the tools same thing the tools same thing what tool you need to pay attention to and use or what tool do you you know you're holding on to tied to or you need to let go of that you're using too much or whatever so let's take a look and see what we got here the warrior the warrior there we go for your aspect of self dear pisces interesting the warrior and the vow wow very very intense energies here so without further ado let's get into the warrior card number 10 almost straight to it the samurai the soldier the advocate we often envision the warrior as an armored figure with sword in hand moving blindly towards battle yet the deeper aspects of this archetype bring us faces face to face with death itself the warrior stands precariously at the edge of life and death trusting the eternal to guide the sword's blade the warrior's work requires presence alignment and purpose um if and when the warrior loses its center, meaning meaningless confrontations and violence are their default response. When this card appears, it is important to question the battle at hand. It is likely a great one with deep roots and long-standing tensions. The actions you take will stay with you long after the dust settles. So choose wisely, brave one, as you draw your sword, realign with the internal wisdom within, then surrender to the battle and when light fierce clarity purposeful action resolve and resilience and when dark threats savagery abandoning mission and values and without a true purpose manifesto or oath the warrior is lost is lost what sorry is lost what do you stand for what are you willing to rise in the name of write it out and be careful as the warrior implies war the two go hand in hand those who defeat others are strong those who defeat themselves are are mighty okay so it feels like with this warrior card and I also feel like you're not that surprised with this that when it comes to making these decisions and conclusions are within reach and and all that good stuff that with the warrior I feel that you that you kind of see these decisions and maybe this is why you've waited you needed time to like get to a certain place you really i'm again wanting the seasons to change like you're just like i'm not going into this battle or into this war in the winter we're gonna wait till spring and that'll be easier to contend with this whatever that this is it feels like you definitely are like have that energy like this is going to be something that's going to you know be like a war um but it's a necessary one i'm hearing it just it's it's kind of going up against the what was set up ahead like for you ahead of time even if it was you know decisions obviously you were in you were in situations so they're decisions that you made but at the same time it's like you know now things are different you're different and it, it's your time to um to be empowered with being able to change and evolve and if other people don't like that then that's really not your problem um you know to be blunt about it um really take inventory of who this truly affects how it affects them and really just concentrate on that if it's just people that need to adjust to your new you know decisions your new way of living moving letting go moving on stopping doing something starting doing something whatever that it is you know let them do them and you can't 
go to war with everybody over your life. Only the ones that it really affects, like your children that they live with you, your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whoever it is, if they're, you know, live with you. Um, and it's going to, you know, you're moving or changing jobs or having a difference in income or I don't know. There's so many different things that I'm seeing here that are possibilities for um, you Pisces. But either way, it's like this. It's like, no, it's like, what are you fighting for? What are you doing this for? Who are you doing this for? Write it out. Like she said, write it out. Like, what is your, what's your mission here? Like, what's your purpose here? Like, wh why are we making these changes? Why do these decisions need to be made? What has brought you to this? And why are you doing this? And what do you expect to find on the other side um, of it? Okay, let's get into the vow. Um. Okay, I'm having a hard time finding it. Gem, the ring, the nectar, the medallion, the kiss. I'm so sorry. I'm just. What the heck here? Those are places. Honestly. Oh, I know what I'm going to do because I'm just, I'm not seeing it. The numbers aren't making sense to me. I'm hitting my microphone with my face. 173. Now I see it. <laughs> okay, whatever. The vow finally there. Thanks for being patient. Okay. The promise, the oath, the contract. When the vow is spoken, the air shifts. Karmic ties are formed the, and destiny tilts on its axis. Our words and intentions have immense power. So true. There is a reason the great mythic stories of our past often include the uh, re re recite uh, reciting of oaths and the mixing of drops of blood as a mark of union the tricky part is that reciting the vow or matter no matter how casually activates the eternal and unseen forces of the world the ancestors bear witness the laws of nature's respond these promises cannot be unsaid or forgotten so breaking them can leave lingering complexities and loose ends this card tells us to acknowledge the vow we are living by consciously or unconsciously and either recommit to it or create a ritual that signifies its closure you've been underestimating the power of your promises and when light bearing witness to the shift towards destiny and when dark unconscious vows uncupped promises messy karma anytime the energy of the vow is present we are in the archetypal realm of ceremony and ritual that means time stands still and anything is possible and think of the last promise you you made was it to yourself or another has it been upheld or broken wow so serious with the vow of course vows are serious and they definitely would i would say are the most intense of intentional speakings is a vow vow to yourself a vow to others or with others that include others so maybe or not maybe definitely vow energy is present here when it comes to this decision making process and what you're going to do about it 
Um, so if this is a decision about either being with somebody or being away from somebody, treat it. And I know earlier I said it's none of their business. Like I said, unless they're fully involved in your decision making, obviously. So I'm saying the peripheral people that may be, you know, affected you know, don't let those people, you know, the people in the audience, don't let them affect your play. Deal with the people in the play. You know, those are the characters you need to be, you know, concerned and worried about, not the people, you know, watching. So first off, differentiate what's what. So you can deal with the actual energy that is yours to deal with. Otherwise, you're taking on way too much. If you're worried about what other people may think of this decision, just the people in the world, the people at large, the, you know, the co-workers, the neighbors, the, the distant relatives, the people on Facebook, those are the people who what they think about, what they, what they think of you is really none of your business. That's something to, to think about. And, it's, and it will help you to go on your path if you extrapolate the things and the people that are none of your business um, for you to be concerned about. Secondly, we're talking about really seeing this decision, seeing your vows, your promises as something very, very big. And it is. So to take stock of what that is, whether you're whether you're going in or you're coming out, whatever it is, the the decisions that are coming are a big deal and to see it as such. And like I said, you know, before, whatever it is and whatever that process is, you need to cut cut cords. You need to get into the understanding of the energy that needs to be released. And and also like I said, you know, once once decisions are made that that a shift happens like when people decide to work with me in my evolve now program just making the decision to do it and then of course scheduling it and paying for it already starts the healing process sometimes weeks before we actually get to the healing and that's because that is a that's a promise to yourself that's an energy to the universe i am doing this big thing i'm going through this through to end of this journey you know full intention and i'm scheduling it i'm paying for it i'm you know marking this in in universal time and history it'll be a thing and everything starts in your world starts to work from that that per, that decision and that aspect um changing in your timeline so whatever this is for you to see it the same way and not to be frightened of it because neither of these neither none of this really is anything to be afraid of at all it's just to be aware of the power of choice the power of energy the power of connection the power of your you know your energy in one way or another and of course the power of the timeline and um sorry the stargate and the timelines that it will be you know working with from this point forward but let's not forget the seven of pentacles came up um as your last card um in the tarot um so know that whatever you're doing here whatever decisions that you you're going to make these choices and you that you're this is really what needs to happen for your future whether it's breaking up with somebody asking them to marry you putting your money into a business, um, signing a contract on a house. Like if you've been waiting on something and waiting for the energy to tilt and get it into yes or no and really feeling into it and moving on one way or another, this is the time that that's going to happen. Okay. And last Lee, we are going to get into the Hidden Worlds Oracle here for you, beautiful Pisces, and see what the Hidden Worlds Oracle has to say for this situation and what to leave you with for the month of April. Whoa, I'm going to take this top card that flipped over, I'm being told. And that is, imagine this, 19, the healing temple of the lunar light. Life cycles, energy healing, communication. There you go, beautiful Pisces. I love this card so much. It's got such amazing energy. 
um, anything that involves healing in the moon, I'm definitely into. Um, let's see here. Okay. Life cycles, energy healing, communication. The cycles of the lunar of wait, the cycles of the lunar being who dwells within the skies above this planet have great powers to help us let go, to help us revive, to help us grow, to help us celebrate, to help us heal in all of these aspects. Likewise, the lunar light heals Oh, sorry. Likewise, the lunar light heals us as newborns, then as children, as adults and old ones alike. She reflects these stages in her cycles, and no matter what point we are at on the wheel, we can find within her healing light and the waters she blesses at every stage of the cycle a sense of who we truly are and bring ourselves to a place of rest and wonder within each stage. Maiden, mother, and crone, hunter, father, and sage, all alike must enter the temple of the wisdom of the cycles. And the temple now calls you to honor the stage of your life you are at. Each stage has its challenges. And as you begin to honor where you are on the wheel, there will be a healing of energy within. The very cells within you, the DNA within those cells will respond to the healing light of the moon. And if you take yourself out beneath her at the stage which is calling you, you will begin to find a serenity and solace that the daylight cannot give you. And within those moments, if you let your gaze soften, you may see revealed the healing temple of the lunar light, which lies between the worlds and which is there for you when you open up and allow yourself to receive their blessings. And as you receive, you shall learn and become the healer who walks in the world and whose energy can change those about you. And illumination. I will gladly enter the healing temple of the lunar light, for there I will find what I have been seeking so long. Oh, it's so powerful. So beautiful. The healing temple of the lunar light calls to you. So again, water, the feminine, moon energy, um, the, the element of water, the healing element of water, and that living crystal also connecting with the moon, also coming through the sun, the moon, the stargate, this time being really, really potent for you in helping to cross you over into a new set of timelines, may, helping you to um, clear energy, to heal, to dig deep in, and let rise up the shadowy parts as well. Um, that, you know, the warrior is definitely there. You're ready. You, you just like the light warrior. If anything, we could put light warrior on t in front of warrior and to be in, in the healing energy here um i feel that i do feel that whomever i'm talking to here this is really about kind of stepping into knowing what you are and who you are and and really making these declarations these decisions that you're going to follow this path that you're not going to deny it that you're going to heal your own blocks allow yourself to move forward as a healer as a guide as a coach or however it's supposed to be but first be your own be your own light warrior again don't let the influences of people who are not on stage with you come into your world keep that separate focus on yourself and the people in your immediate you know world that actually matter and but at the same time you can't live for anybody else you need to live your own story you need to stand up and be the light warrior for yourself be your guide and also be open to finding guides that will help you along the way because this journey is not easy. There's a lot to come in to try to get in our way to keep us from fulfilling these destinies that ultimately help other people fulfill their destinies and they are light filled um, but they do take work and they do take energy and effort. So, But we need to start with ourselves. We need to focus in on on 
on us and not denying the changes that we need to make in our lives. And that's what this is all about, Pisces. This is about you making these big decisions for yourself, you going in a certain direction, you stopping this, you starting this, you leaving this, you going there, you know, things like that. And it could be a couple of different things. It doesn't have to be just one thing I'm seeing. For some people, it's like, well, I'm going to do this, which is going to mean this. It's going to do this, this, this. It's like this whole thing going like pop, 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 pop. And, and I am going back to the vow, just keep it real. Keep it keep one thing at a time. Be patient with yourself. You know, sometimes when it comes to these light worker ways of ours, we start to tap into higher dimensions, high, um, our divine counterparts, and we're privy to a really like higher perspective of how things, you know, are going to, to move forward or what we see for our future. And we get frustrated that we're not there yet. Because remember, the physical is slower than the energetic. And so, so even when we make our decision today, it's going to take time in the physical to see that come into play here. It, things do take time, whether it's healing, clearing, changing, you know, even moving. I mean, think about how much time it takes to move and settle into a new home and have things feel like they're not like this is where I live now. And this is if things don't feel so weird. Um, it can take a really, really long time, months, even a year, two years sometimes to feel like I've finally got things where it feels really good, you know? So we have to think about that. We don't decide to go on a diet and have 20 pounds gone the next day. We wish, right? We don't decide, okay, it's better that we're not, I'm not with that, with that boyfriend or girlfriend anymore, but it takes months, a lot of time to like, let that void of that person f leave and it not feel weird to, to do different things and you know it takes time so be patient with with yourself with your decisions with your energy seek help look to who is important release what isn't and move forward with this beautiful energy because you have you you do have um, quite an important role to play at Dear Beautiful Pisces. And if I can help you, I would love to. Please check out my website for Ascension Coaching, Energy Healing and Clearing, free ebooks, meditations, all sorts of good stuff there. Again, thehealingbutterfly.org. And with that, I will bid you adieu. Have a wonderful and beautiful April Pisces. Bye for now.